Jarvik is now free of the Order's influence. Brilliant as ever, my friend. Thank you for all you have done. Ah, here is something for you. An odd letter arrived a few days ago, signed by one calling himself... A poor fellow soldier of Christ. That's right. Someone you know. Not by sight. But this soldier has intimate knowledge of the Order. He's the reason I've found them so easily in the cities. The letter says you must travel to Winchester, visit God's house and look for a man in white. Then recite this passage. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly cometh wisdom. All right. I'll speak with Randry, get a fuller picture of all this. Do you need something? Keep this. It serves your cause better than it does my pocket. One more gone. The world is brighter for it. As a token of my deep gratitude, I want you to have this. You have done well, but there are more still. I have to go. Then go in peace. I want to see the Alliance map. Python received a message from Winchester, from someone calling himself a poor fellow soldier of Christ. Your hidden ally. Very interesting. More targets, I assume. Yes. So what do you think? Could it be a trap? As a West Saxon stronghold, Winchester will be a rather unwelcome place for you. But that is nothing you cannot handle. If you go, do not go boldly. I will make my way to Winchester. The letter asked me to meet a man in white at a house of God, and then recite this phrase. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly cometh wisdom. A passage from their holy book, I believe. Interesting. Go with care. The seat of King Alfred's power, where hawk shit stains my boots. I will f in their god's house. Show me what lies ahead. <laughs> this must be the house of their timid guard. They built him a rich dwelling. The Lord takes the best of us to sit beside him. Bishop Aylforth? He is not with God. He is locked in the flaming crypt where all heretics go. Hush, they'll hear you. Dane treads the cobbles of God's house. In search of Christ's redemption, I hope. Your Christ can wait his turn. It is you I've come to see. Is that so? When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly cometh wisdom. You know these words, and you know why I speak them. I do. But I am not yet satisfied that you are the one for the task ahead. As Jesus said unto Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Speak the deeds of Christ in order. Only then will you cometh unto my Lord. Why deny the pleadings of an unwashed pagan who aches to know God? Take me as I am, and I will do your Lord's bidding. How great is the burden of learning for one so unworthy. But I see that no amount of instruction in the Lord's words will save your soul. Come. Who am I to meet, priest? I cannot stand waiting in silence. Shh. Even a fool 
When he keeps silent, is considered wise. Yet men become wise by speaking with other men. They grow foolish in keeping to silence. Hush! Your prattling offends God's ears. We're here! May Christ, whose terror scares away the foul throngs, make with me a strong covenant. Was God's lesson instructive? Do all the priests in Winchester have this same skill for drama? You risk your life, Alfred King. I have invited you here to speak on equal terms. Do the Dane laws of hospitality not apply in Wessex? You gifted my Jarl to that wealth from the Order of Ancients, the warrior Fulcane. Fulke is a member of the Order as well. Hmm. The wolves biting at my skirts grow craftier by the day. How much do you know of this Order? Only this and little more. This letter, signed by one who calls himself a poor fellow soldier of Christ, warns of a plot against my life. The Gallows, the Quill, the Sikhs. Three men eager to kill you. Two now. The Bishop Aylfirth is dead. He was the Sikhs, so far as I can tell. And a humble servant of your guard. That must sting. Still, his death has strengthened Christian fellowship in Winchester. I pray the deaths of his colleagues will do the same. You have faced warriors like me many times before, and many times you have lost or been cheated. Why trust me now? I have men in London and Jorvik. Men who send me reports on the rise and fall of the tides of war. Not long ago, men and women of some influence were murdered in those places. In oddly specific circumstances. When I received this letter from our poor fellow soldier, it did not take long to work out why. I don't know your motive, nor what you hope to gain. All I ask is that you finish the work you have begun, before these fallen souls infest England further. I should let the Order kill you. If I made it easy for them, they might even return Sigurd to me. I would return him to you myself. If I knew where they were holding him. But Fulke's treachery has blindsided me as well. Then promise me a reward I can sing about. A healthy king's weight in silver. <sighs> Very well. As much as you can carry. This morning my reeve, Goodwin, was not at his post. A man you trust. Goodwin was following the clues given in this letter when he disappeared. Where was he last seen? At his house, by the West Gate. You may find something there. Eivor, compose yourself while you are my... Day will come. on him arresting Alfred's man. Who rules in Winchester anyway? Is Alfred king or not? Well, you ain't, that's for sure. So keep your mouth shut and do as you're told. Shut your mouth, yeah? Unless you want yours to rot off in the keep. Goodwin gone and guards sniffing around. 
So where would they have taken him? Someone disagrees with Alfred, educating the people of Winchester. Papers thrown in the fire. Goodman covering his tracks, other guards destroying evidence. in the city. A violent struggle with the guards. They must have taken him to Winchester's garrison. Need your eyes, my friend.
and thicker guards, a place to keep a valuable man. Dave Selwyn ordered executions for petty theft and mudslinging. A husband and wife to be carried out soon. Thank <laughs> you. 
a Dane in Winchester. These are strange times. King Alfred sent me, pleading from his bended knee. He was standing tall and proud. That he was, and you are the man I've come to find, Goodman. Do you know why? If I had one guess, to find these heretics from the Order of Ancients and bury them so deep, even God would need a shovel. So where do we start digging? My research should help us. If they haven't burned it already, it'll be somewhere nearby. I will find your research. Now go before they find their wolf has fled his cage. Let's regroup beyond the walls! Goodman's research against the Order of Ancients. I am grateful for your help. It is a brazen move to arrest Alfred's favorite reed. This so-called order are nothing but deviled shit peddlers. Shit peddlers who have wormed their way into every crevasse of your country. They are dangerous. I didn't catch your name, did I? Eivor of the Raven Clan. Scourge of Mercia, if that name does not rattle some recognition. Well, Eivor, when our three heretics smolder on a heap of ash, we'll down a cup of ale together and share our distaste of Mercians like old friends. Alfred believed at least one is dead. Your bishop, Aelfirth, was the six. Bugger. Half of Winchester is in mourning for that nun groper. I found this nailed on a door. The quill wheels words like a knife. A disputation of tutelage. Pretty chatter with poisoned intent. I will look into this more. The Gallows. What do you know of him? Must be another Reeve, I'm sure of it. Only we have the power to mete out justice. And this one would walk with cocksure righteousness. The Gallows had you arrested, so he must command the law. Reeve Selwyn? Of course! That hedge pig has brought down laws like a hammer on Winchester, executing sinners on spurious charges in the square. Could it be another? He's the man. He's the only one who fits. End his terror, Eivor. 
Winchester mourns a good bishop and a strong, virile man. May he find his peace with God. Good people of Winchester, open your eyes. See how Alfred's lofty ideals are weighed down in this mire of human effluence. These prisoners before you do not live by Alfred's laws. They live above them. They wallow in shit, only guided by their own perversity. Hubert here, his wits addled by ale, spoke false of Bishop Aylforth, our pious servant of Winchester, who even now lies cold in his grave shroud. Aylforth was no man of God. He'll burn for his sins. <laughs> Your wife is obeying shrew, Hubert. Is there a man here who has not sup rancid mead from her cup? When will your work be done, Selwyn? When all of Winchester falls to your justice? Winchester has passed judgment, Hubert. May God have mercy on your cankerous soul. <laughs> determine the fate of the perverse if not the goodly people of Winchester. I am but your humble servant. Perverter of justice. Who dares execute the king's noose? It is not in Alfred's name that you carry out your work. You are the Order's executioner. <laughs> you peer through the veil, but you do not see clearly. Alfred's laws are a slave's fever dream. He offers shit-soaked beggars a seat at his table, where the meek devour the strong. Who best to judge the fate of the wretched many, if not the strong and worthy few? To protect your people, you must sheathe your hand in an iron glove. You grind your heels into the backs of freedmen, not those who deserve it. The Order condemns all men to pain. For all men are but a shadow of the perfection we should know. The perfection of the Ancient Ones. You are only a man, Reed. One dead branch on a fast dying tree. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Lord Goodwin, see what he has found on the quill. Selwyn is dead. His lies poisoned everyone against us, and for what? Some only care for their own power and position. I'm sorry I could not see. There is no longer freedom in Winchester. None are safe from his blade. Heaven will swallow the smoke of Aelfa's pyre. Very poetic, but... A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Does Magister Batter not teach you the scriptures? Magister Batter is a horse's dangles. And here is the axe I used to swat a fly. You have ventured from your burrow. And you have plunged my city into chaos. I had hoped you would use the lessons of your subtler gods. We have no subtle gods. If the gallows is truly dead, perhaps we can allow cautious revelry? I did only what I agreed to, Alfred. If your crown now weighs heavy, I would gladly take it from you. <sighs> Forgive my outburst. God sowed in me a passion. But English prose is an instrument long out of tune. We all want better for our people, don't we, Eivor? Yours and ours. The quill remains. What do we know? The decay of learning has been gentle in Wessex. We enjoy the office of wise men, but we have neglected the study of wisdom. The quill preys on this lapse. Did you discover more from the writings I found? I did. The Quill is calling the children of Winchester to arms. Now we know why so many children scurry through the streets. Feral and untutored. I can talk to some. See where they lead me. Good. Find me at the alehouse when you're done. And try not to scare the piss from any of them. We Norse are the monsters of your Saxon mother's bedtime tales. I promise nothing. I see you, child. Come. The bad Reeve. Selwyn. I saw you punish him in the square. He hurt many people. Yes. He hurt my mother to death. Then took her good luck charm. Perhaps you found it? A little carved tree. It is all I have to remember her by. Such a sad story. Take this. Perhaps it will keep you off the streets and out of trouble. For me? Oh, thank you. Spry, little mouse. Will you lead me to your quill? Do you believe in souls? A part of us that lives on with God after we die? Bishop Aylford's passing has made me wonder. Get off me, you oaf! Stop struggling and give back that apple! Apple? I didn't scrubble nothing! Get your hands off me, <clears throat> cow breath! Oh, cow breath? You little street rat! No! Get off! Someone help me! Be it. You'll set Winchester ablaze. Rowley? Oh, God help me. I'd rather be shoveling dung in Malvern again. You there, little cut purse. Keep your beak out, nosy. I'm stuck.
should mind your own beeswax. Elwyn, is it? You wield fire like the flaming Jotna. It, it was burning when I found it. Hot days like this, things just go whoosh. Well? Oi! Wigbert! You great moon calf! Hand it over, Elwyn. We saw your little shadow take it. What are you looking at? Turn around, walk away, and you keep your insides inside. All right, all right, no harm meant. Stay out of trouble, you grub mite. Trouble seems to follow you. And I wriggle out of it like a slippery eel. Why are you following me? Setting fires, stealing things. It's a fearful day's work. Aren't you supposed to be in lessons? You don't need book learning when you're street shrewd. That gets you real places. Or gets you noticed. By the Quill, for example. Does he pay you well to do his dirty work? Us? Working for the Quill? Shows what you know. Is that so? Those were the Quill's meat mops, and you sent them scurrying off with their tails between their legs. It sounds like you owe me your life. This one's brave and strong. Might be able to help us. So you are not working for the Quill? We steal to stay alive and out of the Quill's clutches. But you know where I can find him. They come up from the sewers like rats. Go on. Give him what you took. Maybe he can save us. Good luck, Dane. Try not to get maimed and all that. 